Mr. President, can you tell us, sir, Donald Trump refers to himself as a political prisoner and blames you directly. What's your response to that, sir? Do you think the conviction will have an impact on the campaign? We'd love to hear your thoughts, sir. Should he be on the ballot, sir? Well, there you go. <laughs> What's going on, party people? What is going on? It's your ride share extraordinaire. Your super duper Uber driver is here, guys. Thank you. Thank you. You guys, you already know the deal. Before you hop in my ride, do me a favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. Poor favor. <laughs> Come on. Let's do this. Hop on in. Buckle in and let's go. Yeah! Okay, okay, party people, welcome back. And if you're new to my channel, thank you for hitting that subscribe button. All right, Ken, folks, what are we talking about today, man? So it's the day after the Trump indictment, the Trump conviction, and we see all the talking heads, CNN. They are high-fiving each other. They loving it. They are loving it. Let's take a look at this clip here. It's a majestic day, and we are rightly saying the system worked like clockwork. This is a moment of sort of democratic reset, small d democratic reset for us as a country. His whole dream was to be respected in Manhattan, and it was in Manhattan where he was brought low. I think there's something interesting and poetic about that. It was very satisfying to finally see this guy get some comeuppance. I was at Costco buying, you know, 10 boxes of Keurig coffee, uh, and uh, my, my, my watch started to buzz, and I got so excited I started leaking a little bit. <laughs> I felt like America won. Yep. I felt like New York won. I felt like the Manhattan DA's office won. I felt like I won. <sighs> He is now a convicted felon. People really have to say to themselves, am I going to vote for a convicted felon? In the most simplistic way from here on in, the other side has the ability to take the great brander and brand him in the most simplistic term, convicted felon. And that's powerful. I'm going to say something you've never, ever heard me say before, but <laughs> Donald John Trump. Don't tell me. <laughs> is a convicted, convicted felon. Interesting enough, you have not seen any MAGA folks burning up the city, turn over cars, threatening people. You have seen nothing. Trump and his MAGA followers are, you know, digging in, trying to tear down the system. He's perfectly willing to call out the mob, basically, and have them attack all of these people and threaten their safety. There's going to be violence. There's going to be trouble. This is wrong. There's going to be some problems here, maybe some violence. And this president, former president, should not have done what he did. I don't think he has a problem uh, with the concept of violence. Right. We have seen nothing. But remember when George Floyd, that trial happened, and then we have a senator, Senator Maxine Waters, comes out with her old ass and says this. What happens? What should protesters do? Well, we, we got to stay on the street, uh, and we've got to get more active. We've got to get more confrontational. We've got to make sure that they, they know that we need business. This is not the first time she tell her knucklehead followers to get into people's face and cause ruckus. When the first time Trump won office, she was the main one in front of all these people telling them to get in these people's face and shot them down. Now, do you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station? You get out and you create a crowd. And you push back on them. And you tell them they're not welcome. And now you see that Trump took a loss. And you don't see no MAGA folks out here burning up the cities. You don't see no MAGA folks getting the people face and threatening them. Right? But anyway, let's carry on. 
Now, one interesting thing that they love to talk about is Donald Trump paid Stormy Daniels money for hush money. And there's a clip of Paula Jones getting money, getting a settlement for $850,000 from Mr. Bill Clinton. No, this check is being transferred now without condition because everything is is worked out. All ready and approved. You give the... I beg your pardon? Yes. First of all, I'm going to say it was an okay. honor to meet you, a pleasure okay. to meet you, and thank you very much. You're welcome. There's the check. And show them the check. Raise There's it. the check. It's your check. Well, it's not going to be saying anything. Her attorneys are here today. So- yeah. Yeah. Remember that? Some of y'all don't remember that. Some of y'all don't even know who Paula Jones is. But yeah, that president, hush money payment for a person he allegedly great. Okay? Hillary Clinton hound her down and called all type of names. All right? Believe all women, they say. But Hillary Clinton was the main one dragging his poor girl name all across the media. I'm not sitting here as some little woman standing by my man like Tammy Wynette. I'm sitting here because I love him and I respect him and I honor what he's been through and what we've been through together. And you know, if that's not enough for people, then heck, don't vote for him. This is going to be a reckoning. This is going to be a backlash. And you Democrats, let me give you a clip of Donald Trump, what he says about revenge. You love getting even. Oh, absolutely. You don't believe you don't believe in the eye for the eye. You do. <laughs> no. I know you well enough. I think you do. But anyway, but but it, tell me, I mean, you you're going to get even with some people because yeah, I know. if given they, the opportunity, if given the opportunity, I will get even with some people that were disloyal to me. I mean, I had a group of people that were disloyal. But how do you define disloyalty? Uh, they didn't come to my aid. Well, they what did they do? do they turn their things. back on you? No, but they didn't do small things that would have helped. Yeah, he's not turning the other cheek and then we don't expect him to either. When he gets into office, I want him to go after all you folks. All of you folks. Because that's the only way y'all going to learn. We got to whip your ass, put y'all in jail. And there's no more, there's no more of this because y'all started this. Y'all opened Pandora's box and there's no more Mr. Nice Guy. When Trump get into office, I don't hear no belly aching. It's just awfully good that someone with the temperament of Donald Trump is not in charge of the law in our country. Because you'd be in jail. Secretary Clinton. I hope he burns all you guys up. Alvin Bragg, Merch (laughs) on, the daughter, uh, Letitia James, Fat Fanny Willis, all of y'all, all all y'all need to get y'all asses served. They have is weaponizing the Justice Department to go after the president's enemies. When you win an election, you don't seek to just prosecute the losing side. The president using the Justice Department as a weapon to get what he wants. Department of Justice is totally politicized. Sticking the Department of Justice on political opponents. Threatening to imprison his political rival, Banana Republic style. Trying to exact revenge against all of his enemies. Tin pot dictator in a Banana Republic. Is acting more like a Banana Republic dictator. He's using government resources to go after his political opponent. Um, essentially, we are a Banana Republic. That we are... We are Um, seeking to have a bogus and criminal investigation into a political opponent. And that's using the Department of Justice to also target Trump's political opponent for nefarious reasons. This is a massive abuse of power and a betrayal of our value. Now, we thought Obama was bad, but this guy, and I think Obama's still behind it, but by himself has ruined the justice system. And for what again? What? Because he cannot beat Trump. He cannot beat Trump. Fair and square, he cannot beat Trump. He is killing him in the polls. He is he's raising more money. Your Democrat Party is trying to find another horse to run because they know Biden is losing badly. We have Mr. Joe Scarborough is giving uh, uh, Joe Biden advice. What Joe Biden has to do now, as Cohen says in this article, Mm -hmm. is he needs to bring his base home. 
black voters. We're not coming back. We're not coming back. Especially what you did right now, we're not coming back. No. The only way we're going to come back is Joe Biden, you need to drop a rap album. I've been selling dope back in 1986. I bought a Cadillac and put them thangs on that bitch. The brains blowed out with the white leather seats. Finners fiending for that butter because that other shit is weak. I was only 17, had the neighborhood hooked. Have them stealing out the crib because my crack tastes my like crack ribs. Tastes I'm like up ribs. in the morning, I'm up the rest in the morning with the rest of these You out smoking. here selling them dimes, bitch. Them bitch. Dimes, out here selling them cookies. Them cookies. Other than that, if you don't drop a rap album, we're not coming back. F*** that shit. You done did it to yourself. And when January 20th, 2025 come around, we don't want to hear it. We don't want to hear it. All you guys better rough a cover. Mr. Trump is using the Justice Department to go after his perceived enemies. I feel worried about the prospect of the Justice Department being used as a tool of this president or any. In our little banana republic, any capable prosecutor can get a grand jury to hand down an indictment of something as innocent as a ham sandwich. Anyway, that's the thought for the day. If you guys got any value out of my content, do me a favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. You see that notification bell? Turn on that notification bell so you get my latest and greatest. Share this content with your best friends and tell your mama I said hi. <laughs> all right, all right. Till next time, guys, I'll see you again. And Maxine Waters, get your ass off my lawn. <laughs>